Hey you guys, this is Trevor's 2888 with 88Gaming. Uh, today, this is a review video. Review for Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare. <clears throat> now, the first Plants vs Zombies was a tower defense game, flash based. It was very basic but difficult, provided a challenge. It was a good game, a lot of people enjoyed it. Came out on the tablet and things like that, as well as then expanding itself onto the Xbox and a few other bits and pieces. Now, PopCap Games have um, taken it to the next step with Garden Warfare. Uh, this is a full blown team based shooter. Completely different game. Absolutely incredible. Really, really caught me off guard. Um, so, basically, first off, you've got Garden Ops, which is uh, like a horde mode in Gears or that sort of thing. Uh, you see at the bottom there, play, defend your garden against waves of zombies. Multiplayer, players plants all zombies, and you've got the welcome map, which is very cool. Um, just kind of gets you into the game. You team vanquish is basically team based, uh, like first to 50 kills. Guns and graveyards is basically capture the control point, that sort of thing. Uh, classic team vanquish, uh, I'll get to that as to what the difference between classic and regular is in a mo. Classic guns and graveyard. Mixed mode literally just cycles through all the different types of game mode. Uh, and then gnome bomb as well, which is basically pick up the bomb, plant it on the objective, blow it up. Uh, so yeah, that's the multiplayer. Now, there are characters. This is where the classic comes in. These are the classic characters. If you've played the first, the first Plants vs. Zombies, you will probably recognize these guys. So, you've got Pea Shooter. I've customized him slightly. He's got a hat and chilies and a scar and stuff. That's customization. Um, which, again, I'll come to in a second. Here you've got the Chomper. Again, this has been customized. And, again, is probably something you'll recognize. Uh, Sunflower. Do, do, do. And the cactus. And that's the plants team. The zombies team is Foot Soldier. When it loads. There he is. The engineer. Do 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 Scientist. And the All-Star. 21, hut. There he is. So, um, basically, the classic modes, you can play these characters. Now, in the other modes, there are unlockable characters. You can see how many there are. So, you've got the pea shooter, then you've got one, two, three. I've got the Toxic P. You can see, da, 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 da. these guys have upgraded abilities and stuff. So, the classic guns and graveyards, classic team vanquish. You can't use these guys. Four, five, six seven so got six unlockables there two three four five six seven yeah there's six extra characters to unlock for all of them but you can see you can get kind of really cool uh, armored chomper and stuff um, so yeah that's basically those guys uh, you can see on the right hand side well actually up at the top is my gamer tag and then there's my rank as a player and I've got my coins on the right which come to again in a sec uh, and then on the right hand side are challenges basically you have a rank as a player and then at the same time your characters also have ranks as well you can get to level 10 with any character uh, and that's just by completing those challenges down the side there you can see uh, summon 25 uh, vanquish 25 summon zombies uh, vanquish 10 zombies with splash damage Sunflower, you've got to get five assists, play for 30 minutes with this character, that sort of thing. So a variety of different challenges you can do to get your characters up to level 10. Uh, and the way that you unlock bits and pieces, you've got the sticker book, which is like the almanac in the original game. Uh, it literally tells you everything. Everything you need to know. And you can see Pea Shooter. These are the extra characters, so I'm assuming you've got Flame Guy, Ice Guy, Toxic, don't know, Commando thing. You know, there's, there's loads of characters and stickers and stuff to unlock. You see all the extra customization and stuff you can get as well. Basically, you get that by going to the sticker shop. Use your game coins that you want to open packs, which give you stuff. And I'll show you that in a moment as well. Uh, finally, the last thing is the fact that you can customize their appearance uh, with like all this kind of stuff. You can customize their accessories and everything. Uh, but then you can customize their abilities. Typically, I've gone into someone who doesn't have it, but let's have a look. There you go. So you unlock extra abilities as well. So that is the standard. And then uh, I've unlocked all three extra abilities for the chomper there. So you do that. You can also choose which gestures. Use the D-pad up, down, left, and right, and you can do gestures and stuff like that. So, ta-da, yep. Yeah. 
good times. So that's the gestures and everything. That's the sticker packs. So let's jump into the game and uh, we will see some gameplay in action. Now, as for the review side of things, this game has really caught me caught me off guard. Like I say, um, a game designed primarily to let kids play a shooting game on the Xbox without parents worrying as to you know what sort of content they're being exposed to. But it is a game that kind of hardcore gamers, I think, would really enjoy as well because it has. I mean, you've seen all the elements of the customization and classes and all that sort of stuff, uh, but it also has um, like real shooter elements to it, uh, like capture the flag and stuff like that. But just generally how it plays is just like a normal team shooter. I'm going to be a sunflower. <laughs> So here we go. The general setup, usual kind of shooter controls, zoom in, all that sort of stuff. You get your teammates and everything doing stuff. Now, uh, every character also has special abilities that they can do. Pretty sure there's some kind of major lag going on here. Now, as a sunflower, you can heal other players, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can also drop healing pots. People can heal when they go near them. And then you can go into planted mode where you can't move but you have a more powerful attack. Like this. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the sunflower. Cool. Right, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through all the characters just because. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, so basically you've got all that stuff. Um, like I say, you can see it's got the shooter elements to it. It's a really well put together game. The gameplay is very good. Um, the... Wow. Wow. I don't know what that is. Um, I'm going to turn the volume down on the game for a moment and uh, then hopefully figure out what the hell's going on with that. I think someone has basically just signed in with their headphones on on of all they haven't appeared in the game yet brilliant okay so um yeah game playability really really high you can sit down and play this game there are certain matches that will literally only take a few minutes to do um there are matches that will take you a little bit longer there i mean mostly i think it's going to be uh there we go mostly i think it's going to be um sort of about 10 minutes to finish the match but Gnome Bomb can go on for like literally can be over in about three minutes and Gardens and Graveyards usually last a bit longer so it's uh, yeah it's pretty good for a little sit down if you want to just jump in and have a match and come out of it again but then also you can sit down and play it for for a decent length of time um, graphically speaking it's quite nice to look at it's not you know perfectly refined or anything but it's a game for kids it's a shooting game how many games are like that you know uh, I mean the cartoon style and stuff, the character models are very very nice um, and the environments are very nice as well I just think that a little less time has been spent on the environments than the characters um, <clears throat> doing really badly uh, the playability with regards to how long you'd be playing it for, I mean it depends whether you're a big fan of shooters or not if you're a fan of shooters and you enjoy the game you could probably end up playing this game as much as you would on a Call of Duty or something like that I mean there's no maximum player rank as far as I can see, I mean, I've not seen anybody at maximum rank yet uh, and I've seen people on 184 and it's still going uh, the characters obviously max out at level 10 but like I say you can unlock extra abilities uh, you can unlock customization, you can unlock all that sort of stuff as well, so there is plenty of stuff to do, um, and then even when you do get to the maximum level and stuff you've just got the general kind of playing it generally really, you know uh, as you would with any shooter the downside to this game is it's completely online, so there is no offline play, there is no campaign mode, anything like that, which can be a bit of a pain, I mean it would be nice to have a little bit of a it would be nice to have a single player thing um, but I mean that's how they've designed it they've designed it to be an online player online uh, shooter so that's that's how they've set that up um, the only other thing as well that can be a bit of an issue is the fact that there is no uh, split screen gameplay which is quite annoying as well I mean with things like Halo and stuff like that it's primarily online but at the same time you can um, also do split screen games with people so that's the annoying thing if you've got you know if your kids playing it and you want to play it online with them 
uh, or make sure they're okay. You can't really join in. You have to do your own game. Um, but I mean, that's that's literally the only two downsides. To be fair, is the fact that it's just online and uh, the fact that you can't do split screen. I mean, the game itself is extremely solid. Um, extremely solid, and there's nothing in it really that's inappropriate for kids either. So um, I think that's about it, really. I mean, I've covered the uh, gameplay. I've covered the uh, like the longevity of it as to how long you play it for. Um, game modes and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's that's about it, really. So that's Plants vs Zombies: Garden Warfare. Um, overall score for this game, I would say, is probably a, a nine, to be honest. That's based on the fact that um, I've played it almost non-stop since I got it. <laughs> Um, and my partner has as well, and she doesn't really play shooters other than Halo, and she's she's kind of got involved with this one, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I see the chomper just come up underneath the scientist. Very good. Uh, yeah, nine out of ten for that. The only reason it loses the point, the ten, is just down to the lack of split screen. Really, I mean, not having an offline mode is not a big issue for me, but not having split screen is is uh, definitely something that um, it's lost the point there. So. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching the video. Check back in uh, next week for another review. Same time, same day, same place. And uh, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up if you look at look the game. If you want to get involved in some multiplayer Sundays on uh, Plants vs Zombies and stuff like that, then give me a shout. And uh, equally, don't forget to subscribe for more footage if you're interested. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you around.